Hi guys, welcome back to the teaching and learning. This is Abdul Kafur. So today, uh, the social studies specialization, uh, demand geography, uh, three point one. So in this lesson, I'll be giving you the overview about the geography indicator three point one, and uh, we'll be sharing some the important uh, features or the natural features uh, that will help you a lot in the uh, specialization uh, exam. So you have to uh, watch this video carefully till the end. Please don't skip the video. There are the some uh, features I'll be describing and how these features uh, influence the human settlement. So stay connected with me and I'll be thankful uh, if you uh, think uh, this video is useful. So please like, drop the comments and uh, share these resources with your friends and colleagues. Your subscription will be highly appreciated. So let's talk about the demand. As you can see here, <clears throat> 3.1 so I'm going to explain the natural features and these natural features are the are three indicators so I'll be talking about these three so let's see let me share the powerpoint uh, social studies specializations demand one and demand three so this first part I'll be talking later, which is the land features. Explain how prominent land features have uh, influenced human settlement patterns. So this uh, indicator is talking about the, only the human settlement patterns you can see. So first thing from these, that you have to identify the keywords that what exactly is demand talking about. So this uh, feature or this indicator is talking about the human settlement patterns. Means how human have been settled and how these land or the natural features, they are influencing. Now the word influence, uh, that's something a little bit tricky, okay. We are not talking about here the positive and negative impacts, okay. So the word is influencing, it means it is helping uh, to settle there and uh, it's letting the people understand that these uh, natural features, they are very useful. That's why they uh, settle there and uh, what patterns they uh, decided to uh, settle and the second part that what are the water important water features how the water is uh, helping uh, the and or even in the past you know as you know that the uh, first four civilizations of the of the world there was an important role of the water in the settlement of or in human settlement as in this valley the in chinese civilizations the hong he and the yellow river like in the uh, uh egypt nile river and in iraq or mesopotamian civilizations the the euphrates and uh, tigris rivers so these are some of the examples of the the water features when the water flows and there's a fresh water that was useful for uh, drinking and uh, that was useful for the cropping and agriculture similarly there are some underground uh, features of the earth <clears throat> so so i'll start from the water features explain how important water features have influenced human settlement now, first we need to know what are these water features? What are these natural water features? 
So we have to identify certain water bodies like the oceans, like uh, lakes, like uh, rivers, like uh, oases, like uh, uh, <clears throat> streams. Uh, these are the natural uh, water features and uh, some uh, more water features which is about the precipitation. As you know that uh, uh, the precipitation are the different types of the precipitation like the uh, rainfall, snow, foggy, smoggy, and uh, as a snowfall, also sleet and uh, hail. So these are, are some uh, different types of the uh, precipitations that influence the human settlement now. Now, if you know the difference between the climate and the weather, and you, if you are the geography teacher, that this earth has been divided into the three major uh, climate zones, which is the polar and uh, tropical and the temperate. The, the countries which are closer to the poles, like the North Pole or South Pole, these countries are cold. The countries which are located on the equator with a latitude of 23.5, they are hot in temperature. The countries which are located in between pole, North Pole and equator or tropic cancer, or uh, South Pole in the, the, between Tropic uh, Capricorn, they have the temperate uh, temperature, or you can say the continental uh, temperature, or you can say the uh, dry temperature for that. So these are three now. Now, if we talk about the natural features of the water, if the country is located to the North Pole or South Pole, these are the cold regions. Now, in cold regions, the hardly people live there. They avoid because the rainfall throughout the year, snowfall throughout the year, and mostly the area is, is uh, covered with the ice sheets and they have a large water bodies. That's why human pattern of the cell. So there's a very less populated area. For example, Greenland into the North Pole. The Greenland has a very less population, uh, populated area, which is in the south of uh, Greenland. Now, this is kind of the influence of the people that people has to leave these areas and to settle on those areas which are uh, cultivatable and um, they have uh, more human activities. Like that. Second thing, uh, the areas where <clears throat> is a desert and the barren areas. So pe people mostly try to live under the coastal areas. They set certain pattern of the living. They make the clusters, uh, houses there, or you can say that the group of the colonies there, and uh, they continue the uh, normal economic activities of them. And the main source of their uh, connectivity is the water, just like I haven't given you the example of the uh, Nile River and all these things. So these are some of the uh, the water features that you may be asked about the question that what are the uh, natural uh, water features? Okay, so these are the natural water features and how they are influenced. So the most important thing that the people try to live close to the water, where the water is drinkable, where the water and uh, are useful so that they can continue their activities on. Now, another thing about, you know, that the underground features. Now, what are the underground features? If you know the layers of the earth, that earth has the three main layers. One is the crust, the mantle, and core. Now, what activities are happening inside them? The earth is rotating around the sun. <clears throat> now, what happens, you know, that this movement is called 
uh, is happen through the uh, on the axis, or you can say that uh, it completes twenty four hours to complete one rotation, and and that uh, three sixty five days to complete in one orbit of that. Now, what features are inside? You know the underground features. There's an earthquake. There's a, a volcanoes. There's a different layers of the earth. I'll share you know that uh, uh, if you have studied the hori horizon layers, you should know about the horizon layers. So horizon has a five layers of you know that. If you know that the formation of the uh, metamorphic rocks, that the metamorphic rocks are under cavern rocks. You know this is one of the uh, feature of this. You know if you know that the porous and non-porous areas. And uh, we dig and we get the underground water from there. So this is underground, you know. So wherever is the natural disasters, people avoid to settle there. They try to live or settle in the safe zones and where they feel the comfort of these, you know. So in the mostly in the areas when these techno, uh, techno, uh, tectonic uh, plates, they are colliding and they are moving so these features you have to be very careful in. One of the other thing, which is the divergent and the, the convergent, uh, the plates, you know, these boundaries, they are also one of the feature of the, uh, one of the natural feature of them. So you should know these underground activities and how these underground are activities are influenced on in these zones. Now we'll go to the main and the, uh, one a last feature or the first one that uh, how prominent land features what are the land features the land features they are how land is look like is it the mountainous area is it the hills plateau plains or the desert barren areas these are the definitely they are influencing the, on the human settlement so i took these four major uh, the uh, land features, which is the one of the mountains area. So in the mountain area, people avoid to settle there. Now, what are the reasons? So it's the discourage of the settlement. That it's a high elevated area. The temperature is low, cold, okay, weather there. And uh, it's hard to uh, the supply the basic needs. It's uh, hard to transport and it's on. But the settlement pattern onto the there is the people they are living on there. How they live on there? What type of the settlement they are doing? Okay. Similarly, hills will not support human settlement. Plateau is not suitable for because it's a uh, you know uneven and some areas are highland and some are the as compared to the uh, the land the plateau is a high elevated land. The plains are the suitable for that. <clears throat> but what type of the settlement people they prefer? We have three types of the settlement or three types of the settlement patterns. One is the uh, nucleate settlement pattern, which is a clustered. And another one is the linear settlement, which is a chain settlement. And the third one is the disparate settlement, which is the isolated settlement. How these areas are look like, as you can see this uh, settlement pattern. So this is the nucleated uh, uh, settlement, which is the clustered settlement, but especially people uh, prefer onto the mountain area to live in the clusters. They cannot go in the spread because they just decided the uh, peak of that and that one. But the people avoid to settle on there. The, only those people who live, they are very familiar with this and they uh, love to uh, enjoy the nature or maybe uh, from one of the heritage characters again. Okay. The second one is a linear, which is a chain of, you know, the, the both sides of the, that can be onto the river or uh, that can be onto the, uh, what we call uh, the business uh, uh, zones, okay. So in these areas, people try to live in the linear uh, settlement they have. The another one, which is preferred in the valleys, you know, especially in the valleys, the people live in the desperate form okay which is isolated okay they are in the scattered form okay so uh just give you the no overview or uh, conclude these you know so the mountainous area or the settlement patterns are three types major one is the nucleated linear and disparate nucleated is a cluster linear is in the chain of that one and disparate is in the valley 
Now, these, why people like these, you know, this is because of the land feature. This is because of the, uh, what we call uh, landform, which type of landform it is. You know. Second thing about, you know, the water features, as I've seen, uh, said, you know, there are the different water features like a spring, oasis, waterfalls, oceans, precipitations, rainfall, the glaciers, and uh, uh, snowfall, all these. These water features, they are influencing. If there's a cold area, mostly rainy, all these things, people don't settle on over there. But if it is a seasonal, people try it. Okay, People try to settle on those areas, which the water is drinkable and uh, having a uh, no, 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 excess uh, amount of the water they can use for the agriculture. Thirdly, the underground features, as I've mentioned, the layers of the earth, the layers of you know the soil uh, they are uh, impacting onto the human settlement they can cause the natural disasters like these uh, divergent and convergent boundaries they uh, can create the volcanoes eruptions they can uh, earthquake okay even one of the water features can be a uh, tsunami as well as you know can be so these natural features they are really influencing onto the human settlement i hope this information will be very useful. What the terms I have used in this video, please focus on these terms, okay? Stay blessed and uh, thank you so much. We'll be meeting in the next lesson with the new topic of this one. Till that, uh, take care of yourself. Have a good day.